All right, guys, so creatine monohydrate or creatine hydrochloride, aka creatine HCL. Which one should you take? That's exactly what we're going to talk about today. My name's Garrett from Set for Set, and today we're going to break down what are the differences between these different versions of creatine. Um, is one going to give you more strength gains, uh, more fat loss? What's the difference? So before we talk about what's the differences between these creatine versions, we need to talk about like what is creatine because there's a lot of uh, misinformation out there. So creatine is simply a non-protogenic amino acid that naturally occurs within our body already. So when we look at food sources for creatine, we find that it only comes from different animal products. Specifically, we consume most of our creatine from red meats, fish, and some other lean meats. This is one of the reasons why when looking at the blood levels of, say, vegan, vegan athletes, uh, their creatine levels are awfully much, much lower. And so when we consume creatine, the vast majority of it is stored within our muscles, uh, about 95%. So then we have all this creatine just sitting in our muscles. And the reason it's there is because our body uses it to resynthesize ATP. You know, so ATP is known as our energy currency, and it's literally what runs every single muscle contraction in our body. Without the constant production of ATP, we would literally just stop moving. So the reason that we supplement with it is because depending on your diet, your creatine levels are only at uh, 60 to 80% full. So what we are trying to do when we take a creatine supplement is we're literally just like topping off the levels, right? You're about to go on a long distance road trip. You got three quarters tank, but eh, let's top off. So when we're taking a creatine supplement, that's what we're doing. We're, we already have creatine in our muscles. We're just filling it to the brim. So topping those creatine levels off, what it does is it gives us just enough energy to knock out a couple more reps, uh, to add five or 10 extra pounds to run just a little bit harder. Basically, it allows us to do more work. And then this extra work then translates into more muscle growth, more strength gains, uh, we become faster, et cetera, et cetera. And so in terms of supplementation with creatine, creatine is by far the most well-researched and most effective supplement product on the market. Over at the International Society for Sports Nutrition, in their stand on creatine, they give a list of benefits that your average trainee will see. This includes five to 15% more strength and power short term, five to 15% more work performed during maximal muscle contraction, a one to two kg gain in body weight in the first week. And then over long term, you can expect to see a good five to 15% increase in strength and performance. You know, so if it works so well, why so many versions? Why so many variations? They claim to give you gains faster, they claim to be absorbed better, so on and so forth. One of those is creatine hydrochloride, AKA creatine HCL. So the problem that creatine HCL is trying to solve is the loading protocol seen with creatine monohydrate. And so when you take creatine monohydrate, you need to do what's called a loading protocol. This is when we're getting your body to maximally absorb creatine so that you reach maximum levels faster. This generally includes taking 20 to 25 grams per day for five to seven days. Uh, that depends on the brand you take and so on. So the problem that exists with that is that some people do experience, you know, gastric distress. Um, they get cramping, they feel bloated, so on and so forth. So before we go to creatine HCL, the quick fix of that is that you don't need to take all 20 grams at the same time. You can just take, you know, three grams seven times throughout the day. Even after your loading protocol, you don't need to take five grams all at once. You can take one gram five times a day. So just doing that will greatly mitigate any type of distress that you may or may not feel after taking creatine. So anyways, creatine HCL comes in and, and they claim that this version of creatine has a much higher solubility level. Sometimes the number 38 times more, or 41 times more is thrown around. Thus, when you drink it, your body is able to absorb it quicker. And so this mitigates the need from doing these crazy protocols. And in turn, can mitigate the distress that you might feel. And so when looking at the research, some of the problems that come from this is that there's these claims that you only absorb you know, 3% of your creatine within 90 minutes. At the same time, there's studies that show that this is not true at all, that show 
that your body absorbs about 90% of creatine monohydrate. We also need to keep in mind, right, that all of the benefits that we see from creatine from different studies have been done with creatine monohydrate. So it's very difficult to say that something is 10 times as better than that or five times better than that, unless you're trying to propose that you're going to improve your strength gains by 25 to 50%. You know, the reality is there just haven't been enough studies on creating HCL to really come up with a firm conclusion. At the same time, there's tons of studies that show that creatine monohydrate is very effective. I believe there's like one study that specifically looked at creatine monohydrate versus creatine HCL. So what this study did is they used three groups of trainees and put them on a strength and conditioning program. Because the whole point is that you're not supposed to have to take so much HCL, one group used one and a half grams of HCL, one group used five grams of creatine HCL, and one group used five grams of creatine monohydrate. And what's interesting about that study is that the differences weren't in strength gains. When you looked at the overall muscle gain, creatine monohydrate group actually had more muscle gain than the one and a half gram creatine HCL group. While in this study, the five gram creatine HCL did have more muscle gain than the creatine monohydrate group, the whole point of taking HCL is so that you don't have to take so much. And so the main difference basically came from change in body composition. And that was primarily seen in the five gram group. They experienced a bit more muscle gain and they had experienced a bit more weight loss. What's also interesting is it doesn't really say anything about the diet. That and creatine is traditionally not thought of as a fat loss supplement. You know, in fact, I don't know anybody who takes creatine because they want to lose fat. Maybe they go to like caffeine or some sort of, you know, thermogenic. Regardless, that's the one study. And the important thing to remember is that better results were only seen in the five gram HCL group. So that basically makes taking one and a half grams pointless. And so if you want to take creatine HCL because you don't have to take so much, this study shows that's not the case at all. We also need to remember creatine monohydrate group body comp did still improve and they still gain muscle mass. And so while there's not a whole lot of studies on creatine HCL, there is another study that looked at creatine monohydrate versus buffered creatine. A buffered creatine is basically a different version, but the same idea that you absorb it more. And what's funny with this, this result is that they found that the individuals who took regular creatine monohydrate, their creatine stores actually raised significantly higher than the buffered creatine group. And so that's another version of creatine, but it's the same idea that they're making these claims that creatine's not absorbed and that theirs is absorbed more. That just really isn't true. And in addition, there are no other side effects found in the creatine monohydrate group. Like we're not saying that never happens. It's not nearly as bad as some of these supplement industries want you to think it is. Like there's just not enough studies to say that HCL is definitely better. However, you need to assess the cost. You know, creatine HCL is generally much more expensive than creatine monohydrate. So you're going to pay more for creatine HCL. And again, we need to consider the main, you know, supposed benefit from creatine from creatine HCL, and that is the digestion issue. And so if digestion really is an issue for you when you take creatine, yeah, it might be something that might be worth it for you. You know, if you take creatine monohydrate and you don't feel bloated, there's really no reason at all to use any other version. And so that's it guys. Basically creatine HCL and all these other versions are just the supplement industry recreating the will. They're trying to create a problem that doesn't exist and then tell you that they have the solution for it. Creatine monohydrate is awesome. That's what's been used in all the studies. And in our opinion, that's what you should probably be using. If you have any other questions you'd like to answer, feel free to leave them below. And with that, I'll see you next time.